Last week we, we, we talked about peace. We, we said about guarding our peace and protecting our peace. We talked about how there will be plenty of opportunities for you to make a decision to stay in peace. Now, by a show of hands, has anybody had to make a decision this week to stay in peace? I told you. You thought I was lying. Okay. Amen. We talked about how those opportunities will arise and you'll have opportunities to either stay in peace or go back to fear, to doubt, and uncertainty. In line with peace today, I want to spend some time on love. Because this thing will need to be rooted in us, and this would be the thing that we will be continually tested on. A father was having devotions with his family, and they were talking about the love of God and the love of Jesus. And the mother was in the kitchen fixing pancakes, and when they finished the devotions, the mother came and took the first batch of pancakes and handed it to one of the two sons. The other son, who didn't get the first batch of pancakes, said, didn't you hear what daddy said? He said that Jesus says that we are to consider others better than ourselves. So the son with the pancakes said, well, then you be Jesus. <laughs> you be Jesus. I'm going to eat these pancakes. Because, see, it's easy to talk about the word love. It's uh, easy, even easy to hear about love and not really fully understand or comprehend what love is and what we're supposed to do with this word. For some of us, we might think of love as, as emotions or, or, or a feeling. We think about our kids or you might think about your spouse. Some of us think about love as those, those butterflies in your stomach on a first date or when you see that special someone. Or for me, when I see my food coming around the corner that I ordered, hey, amen. <laughs> Some of you may even say, no, nah, Pastor, you know, I, I get peace. I'm with you on that. But love, this is the thing I got down. I am one of the most loving people I know. And other people may disagree, and that's fine. But I am the most loving person I know. But today, I really want to challenge your thought when it comes to love. I want to challenge your, your, your process when it comes to what love is, why love is important, and, and why has Jesus called us to display a specific type of love. We want to talk about why love is important, what love, what biblical love really is, and why Jesus has called us to display this type of love. Let's start in John chapter 13, verses 34. I'm going to read out an Amplified Bible. Uh, John chapter 13, verses 34. All right. It says, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. I'm going to read that again. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. He says, I'm giving you. Who is you? You is us, his followers, his children, his disciples, the believers. He says, I'm giving you a new commandment. That right there should tell us why we should view love as important. That right there, bottom line, should tell us. It wasn't a strong suggestion. It wasn't a if you have some time or if you feel like it kind of thing. He said, this is a commandment. When Jesus gives a command, we should see it as such. We should know that if it's important to Jesus, then it should be important to us. It should be important to us. Not only that, but we serve a God of purpose. Everything that he does, there is a purpose or a reason behind it. Now, whether we find out the purpose here or in eternity, we must understand that everything that God does, all of the commands and suggestions, they are purposeful. Therefore, this love should be important to us because it was of the utmost importance to God. It has to be important to us because God said that it was important to him. 
What made this passage significant was because of the standard that Jesus was setting. Jesus was setting a standard through this. He said, uh, uh, he said uh, uh, the standard wasn't the love that was the culture or the world around him. He didn't say, look at the world around you and, and that's how you should love others. He didn't even say, you know, look at the, the culture that the Jewish system had established and he was a Jew. He didn't say, look at the system around me. And let that be your example of love. No, he said the standard for love was himself. The standard for love was himself. He said, just as I, so are you too. Why? Because if we looked at the world around us to establish what love is, then it would change every time the culture of thought changed. Now, Culture, current culture changes every six months. Every six months, culture changes. So the idea of what love is, um, let's see, six months, 2021 year, 12,126 times the thought of love would have changed since Jesus. That's not what God's desire was. His desire wasn't for us to look at our news feed to determine what love is. His desire wasn't for us to look at sitcoms or movies or books or, or social media or what was generally acceptable to the world to tell us what love is. He said, don't look at the world. He said, look at my son. Don't look at the thing that's ever changing. Look at the thing that remains the same. He said, look at Jesus. He said, look at me. That is the example. That is the blueprint. That is love. And that love never changes. This is why love is important. This is why this love is important because Jesus presents to us an authentic love that sustains us while the world continues to create counterfeit versions of love. Counterfeit versions of love. And it'll change every time the, the seasons change and based on what the world thinks. Oh, no, let's, let's call love this this time. Oh, no, no, real love looks like this. No, no, love looks like this. He says, no, love looks like Jesus. Love looks like Jesus. John 13, chapter 35. We read 34. Let's continue with 35. He says, by this... By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, if you keep on showing love among yourselves. If you keep on showing love among yourselves. Jesus says, this is how people will know who you are. This is how. Not by your church attendance, which is good. Not by your serving, which is good. Not by your giving, which is good. While those, th those things are important, they still don't meet the mark. Jesus said, you will know them by your love. The love that you show one to another. How do you show the love of God? How do you show the love of God? This is why opportunities like our outreaches and the, the opportunities we have to serve our community is important because all men won't know his disciples because we have awesome services on Sunday or Saturday. Men won't know that we're disciples because we have great worship moments and we, we have a, a great facility with, with coffee and tacos and sweaters. They're, they're not going to know us because of that. He said the one thing that will make the difference is our love. This is why the enemy will continue to look to attack your love walk in this season. It's because he understands the vital importance of you being a conduit of God's love to this world, to this community, to this city, to your family. He says this is how they will know. If we want the world to know who we are, then we can't look to Sundays to be the reason. 
The love that we show Monday through Saturday will draw them to the Savior that we come together to worship on Sunday. This is why this type of love is so important. That is why this type of love is so important. He says, this is how the world will know. What's the opposite? When you don't show love, that is how the world will know. Because you will encounter people who have, and we talked about this, this is our, our whole limitless life, changing the way that you see Jesus' face in the church. Why? Because you will encounter some people who call themselves Christians who don't show the love of God. And then that person that will encounter them will say, you know what, I don't want to have nothing to do with your kind of Jesus because you are deep and nasty. You say that you love Jesus, but your actions, why are you mean? Why are you so mean? And, and here's the thing. This, this will get you every time. Ain't you supposed to be a Christian? Ooh, that'll get you right there. Why? Because we are supposed to be the example. And when we show a great example of the love of God, people want to know. Okay, so we talked about why it is important. Let's go to what biblical love really is. So we look at it, we say, okay, if we're not supposed to look to our news feed, if it isn't the love of today, and it isn't the love that the world, that, that, that they generally ascribe to, then what is this love? What is this love? How can we know the difference between the world's love and the type of love that Jesus is calling us to? That's a great question. Let's, let's, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Now, just a little background here. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, right? He received a letter uh, from the church, and they, they're asking about, they're asking some questions. They said, Paul, let me, what, what about this? What about that? More specifically, they asked about spiritual gifts, because they're like, oh, we want to we wanna see some stuff happening. We, we want to we wanna see some things. So, so tell her, how can we walk in these spiritual gifts? And as they ask that question, Paul turns that thing and he says, wait, wait, wait. I, I hear you on the spiritual gifts, uh, uh, but, but let's talk about the heart behind those gifts. Because those gifts mean nothing if it's not rooted in love. He said it means nothing if it's not rooted in love. Then he clearly and plainly describes what love, what biblical love is. He talks about that. He describes that love that Jesus was referring to in John chapter 13. Verse 1, he says, if I were to speak with eloquence, I'm reading this out of the Passion Translation because I love the way they say this. If I were to speak with eloquence. In earth's many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I did not express myself with love. My words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than just a clanging cymbal. Nothing more than, than just a clanging cymbal. And if I were to have the gift of prophecy, since, you, since you're asking about gifts and if you want to know about the gifts, he said, if I were to have the gift of prophecy and I had a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets and I possess supernatural poly, uh, uh, knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but I never learned to love, then I am nothing. I'm nothing. He said, I got all of these gifts. I got all of these magnanimous. I know everything. I can speak in earth's many languages. But if I don't have learned to love, then I am nothing. Verse 3. If I were to be so generous to give away everything I own to feed the poor. He says, you can give all you want. You can put in the offering. But if you're nasty, it still don't matter. And I offer my body to be burned as a martyr. I'm sacrificing myself. Without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Oh, come on now. He says, you can put yourself to be, to, to, to be killed. But because you've done it in pride, because you've done it in see me spirit, because you've done it because you want people. Oh, look, guys, I'm giving this money. I just wanted you to know I gave. Look at me. 
He says you can do all of that, but if you don't have the pure motive of love, you gain nothing of value. You gain nothing of value. Verse 4, he, 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 now he's going to tell us what love is. He said love is large and incredibly patient. See, if you came in here today and you said, no, nah, Pastor Keenan, I, I walk in love. We're going to see. We're about to find out. <laughs> love is large and incredibly patient. Most of y'all are done right there. <laughs> and me. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. I, I'm just reading the scripture, guys. Don't get mad at me. Word for word, I'm just... It says, love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Remember, he's talking to the church. He ain't talking to the world. He's talking to us. He said, love, love. He said, no, 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 no. Your titles mean nothing. Love does not brag about its achievement nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. See, see, this, is, this one right here is specific because we live in a world and a culture and in a generation right now that traffics in shame and disrespect. This code, we, we'll cancel you in a minute. We'll disregard you and throw you away in a minute and talk about you and, and we'll, we'll cover it up to say it's a joke or, 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 hey, we're just playing. No, love does not traffic in shame or disrespect. It doesn't seek its own honor. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Hey, come on. We got, we just, let's just take that in. Let's just take that in. Some of y'all was easily irritated this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and it finds no delight in what is wrong. See, the world right now is, oh, that's wrong. Oh, let's, let's pull out our cameras and tell everybody about it. Let's, let's videotape it. Let's, let's go tell this person and that person and that person about how this person did something wrong. No, that's not what love is. Love is a safe place for shelter. It never stops believing the best for others. We are quick to give up on people. No, well, how many times I got up? Well, Jesus said seven times seven times seven. We're quick to just throw somebody away and, 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 and cancel them and, and forget about them, forgetting that those are God's people. He said love is a safe place. It never stops believing the best for others. It never takes failure as defeat because it never gives up. This is what love is. This is what God has called us to. This is the lifestyle that God desires for us as believers to walk in. This is the love that will change people's minds. This is the love that will change people's hearts. This is the love that will make a difference in this city and in your family. This love. This love. This love. So when you see that nephew, hallelujah. When you see that cousin, when you see that in-law, that family member that just gets on, hallelujah. I want you to make a decision. I want you to go back to this. You might need to pull it out right then and there. Let me just, you know what, let me, let me just read this again. Because what did he say love was? Let me make sure. Because you, sometimes you just got, you, uh, you know what, I'm, I feel myself, let me get back in line. Let me, let me check, let me go back to my base. Why? Because you're going to be tested in this area because the enemy does not want you to succeed in this area. Because by you showing that love to that family member, to that person, to that neighbor, to that coworker, it's a shift happens in them because of your reaction. And then they say, oh, oh I, I wasn't expecting that. I know you wasn't. I know you wasn't. But I'm ready today. I'm ready. 
well, what, what, what made the difference? What, why, 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 why aren't you acting like, I'm, I'm going ahead of my, let me keep going. <laughs> this is the model. This is the litmus test that we should be looking at to determine what love is. This is what it should look. We, we're not looking at social media. We're not looking at uh, 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 politics. We're not looking at famous people to determine what love looks like. If anything, those things divide us and cause us not to walk in love. This is what she, we should be looking at to determine what love is. This ain't no Valentine's Day butterflies in your stomach date type of love. This ain't that. This is something different than that, that what Paul is referring to. This love is something different. This is what is known as agape love. This is known as agape love. Pastor, what you talking about? There are four unique f forms of love represented in Scripture. And they're communicated through four Greek words. Uh, eros, meaning sensual or romantic love. That's where we get that from. Storge, meaning uh, 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 f family or familial love, all right? And then philia, meaning brotherly love. And then the last one is what we're talking about today. Agape. Agape love or God's love. I have that definition up there. Uh, uh, agape or God's love. What does it mean? It means unconditional love, unconditional love focused on the well-being of another, okay, demonstrated through action, okay, that transcends and persists regardless of circumstances. We're going to go over that again. Get your notes out, get your cameras out. You're going to need to refer to this. Trust me, trust me. What is agape love? I'm going to leave it up. Don't worry. Agape love. It's unconditional love. Okay? It's unconditional love that is focused on the well-being of another. Okay? So it's focused on the well-being of someone else. It's demonstrated through action. That means you can't just talk about it. You got to be about it. And then it transcends and it persists and it continues regardless of circumstances. Regardless of what comes, what's happened, what's said, what's done. Agape says, it don't matter, I'm still here. That's what agape love is. So what is biblical love based on what we know? Based on, based on this scripture, if, if we're talking about a biblical love and we're, we're talking about agape, what is that love of the Bible? Here we go. Here we go right here. Biblical love is the decision, not a feeling. It's the decision to compassionately, which means out of concern for someone else, righteously, based on God's word and God's standard, and sacrificially seek the well-being of another. Compassionately, it's a decision. See, some of us think love is just, you know, oh, it's just, no, no, no. Love is a decision. We have to just marry people. Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning, every morning, and you make a decision. I'm sorry. Happily married people. Okay. You wake up in the morning, and you make a decision to love. You make a decision to love every day, every morning. When something happens, you make a decision to love. Biblical love is a decision to compassionately, righteously, and sacrificially seek the well-being of another. Let me tell you something. I was tired yesterday. <laughs> tired. It has been a long weekend. But we got, we were there Friday all night. Well, I wasn't there, my wife was. But we were there Friday all night. <laughs> Saturday morning, early in the morning, we're there all day long. But as we're there serving other people, this joy is on the inside of us. As we're there, we don't even feel tired in that moment. We're there. We're trying to get it done. Uh, 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 Lana's there. Mia's there. My wife's there. They're getting together. They're getting it done. And what happens? In that moment, they are sacrificially 
showing the love of God. They're not doing it off of their feelings because they tired too. I know they was tired because I was tired looking at them, okay? So, so, so they made a decision, right, to compassionately, out of concern for someone else, righteously, based on God's standard, and sacrificially seek the well-being of another. This is what agape love, this is what biblical love is. This is the culmination of, of what Paul was talking about in Corinthians and, and what Jesus was talking about in John and, and what we see Jesus display throughout the scripture. Unconditional love. Jesus had unconditional love that was focused on us. He was on the cross, nails in his hand. Nails in his feet, pierced to the side until his insides began pouring out because he was, he was focused on us. He said, I'm, I'm going to do this. Why? Because I'm, I'm focused on us, demonstrated through action. He says, you know what? I'm on the cross. Here is the action of this displayed love. And it continues to persist regardless of the fact that we continue to fall short says it's not about what you're doing. It's not about what, what you forgot to do or it's not about the fact that you failed. It's not, it's not about the fact that you, you might not have prayed this morning or, or, or you might have messed up here. He says it don't matter. My love is consistent. It is continual regardless of circumstances. This is God's kind of love. This is the love that Jesus has commanded us to show to others. And he says, by this love, they will know who we are. If we walk in his love, if we press towards this mark of agape love, people will come to know who we are. Why? Because this love is so anti this world. It's so anti this culture that we can't help but to stand out. We can't help but to be light in the midst of darkness. We, we can't help but to be salt in a bland world. And they look to us because of the love that we show. And what happens? What happens when we, when we, uh, we show that love? People want to know. Why, why are y'all out here on a Saturday morning handing out food? Why, why are y'all uh, taking care of people that y'all don't even know who may never come to your church? Because that's what God has called us to do. Because that's our job. This is how God has called us to walk. This is the love that God has called us to show. That's why. And then they want to know, how do you do that? I, I just don't get it. I don't understand how you could do that. How? Oh, you asked the right question. I can do that because Jesus Christ lives on the inside of me. And I know who I was. I know where I was. And he made such a difference in my life, such a change in my life, that I now want to share that love. Any opportunity that I get, I am determined to show the love of God. What is our purpose in this world? Our purpose is to show the love of God. This is why the enemy looks not only to attack your peace, but he wants to attack your love wall. Because when they see you being different, when they see you acting different, when they see you responding different, when they see, they see you, you're not acting crazy like they acting crazy, and you're not, you're not uh, uh, offending people like they offending people, and, and, and you, you, you're caring for people, they want to know why, and we are able in that moment to point them to Jesus. Now, why has Jesus called us to display this type of love? Early in John, we see uh, uh, Jesus saying that by this, they will come to know Jesus. And at the same time, Paul in Ephesians shows us that God's desire is for us as believers, by showing God's love, to come to a deeper knowledge of God's love. He says, I want you, by showing God's love, to come to a deeper understanding of God's love. 
Because as you show God's love, you become more and more like him and your, your capacity for love expands. And as that capacity for love expands, God's love expands on the inside of you. And now you are becoming more and more like God's love. I, I, I know this to be true because there's some instances that I know that we've had that God has done some amazing things for us. And we know that we don't deserve it. We know that it was nothing that we did. And we're like, man, God, I just want to thank you for your love, God. God, I just want to thank you for your love, God. He says, I, I, I want to do it so that other people will come to know me, but, but I, want to, I, want to, I just want you to come to, to know. I want you to come to understand what this love is all about. I want to read this, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to do this. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Ephesians 3, verse 17 through 19. And I'm closing here. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, and make its permanent home in your heart. He says, may you be rooted deep in love and found securely on love. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the, the breadth? What is the length? What is the height? What is the depth of it? He says that you will come to know practically and through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses Knowledge without experience. He says that you may be filled through all your being until all of the fullness of God may have the richest measure of his divine presence and you become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. He says you show God's love. And as you experience God's love, you come to the knowledge of God's love to the point where you will be filled with the presence of God. And you will come to an under. The thing that makes this so crazy is he says, he says, your love will cause you to know it and experience it for yourself, even though it surpasses mere knowledge without experience. He, said, he says, normal, regular knowledge, this, this head knowledge, this, this just talking kind of thing, they won't be able to come to understand it. But you, as you show God's love, you increase your capacity for God's love. And God's love comes and rests and, and is at home, and is rooted in your life. And you become a body that's holy, filled, and flooded with the presence of God. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you were completely and wholly filled with the presence of God? He says, that's what I want for you. He says, he, he says that's what I want. He says, but the way that we do that, the way that you get that is by walking in the love and experiencing and showing the love of God. This is why the enemy wants to attack your love walk. He does not want you to be a body flooded with the presence of God. He doesn't want you to be 100% flooded with the love of God. Understand what an attack on the enemy you would be Holy field with the presence of God. He said, this is our desire. This is the desire. The enemy wants to attack your love because he doesn't want you to walk in love. He doesn't want you to show the love of God to other people so that they could come to the knowledge of God. But ultimately, he doesn't want you to be filled with the fullness of God. 
Because a person who walks in the fullness of God cannot be distracted. They cannot be swayed. They cannot be taken off course. Nothing that can come can move them because the very presence of God is in them. And nothing will be able to stand in their way. And nothing will be able to stop them from fulfilling the will of God for their life. Nothing will be able to stop them. This is why love is so important. This is why this love is so important. This is is why we must understand and have a basis for what biblical love really is. And this is why Jesus has called us to display this type of love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This love is everything. This love is everything. 